Welcome back to Force Education, this is Zed. Today we're going to be talking once more about bi buying nano genomics. If you haven't watched my previous DD, I do recommend you do so. Make sure to drop a like to this video to help this channel grow. Subscribe and notifications on. Now let's jump right into this one. So, bio nano genome. This one here is related to genome mapping. So this one is a game changer based on the industry, especially in research, research and education. Now, for this one here, I did cover extensively Sapphire products. I did cover uh, by nano ships, by nano prep kits, data solutions, and everything in between. So, this as an update, we need to look a little bit into a few things. So, the first thing here, by nano chief medical officer presents vision for optical genome mapping as a first line clinical tool for cancer and genetic disease testing at Festival of Genomics and Biodata. So, but that was a bullish thing that we have. This is going on from January 26th to 29th, the conference itself, and that definitely was seen as a bullish uh, news. BioNano significantly reduces analysis co anal sorry, analysis cost time to actionable results with update to its cloud compute. So a better version there for the computing, providing uh, resources that can compute more than 50% at a time of uh, the compute time is reduced by 30%. So by Nano Genomics as well announced the closing off $230 million uh, dollars in terms of public offering. Now, if you do remember, $230 million, which is around this level here, plus 101, that gives you around more than $332 million. And guess how much their actual uh, debt level is? So their final debt in general... Here, we're going to go quickly into Yahoo Finance. We're going to go to Financials. And we're going to go to the last quarter and Balance Sheet. That's how you can find all the debts for these different companies. And you will see that their final debt in general is sitting down at $16 million. So take that into consideration. You have $16 million in debt. You can easily be wiped by their massive cash of $330 million. So that is as well bullish. And what they've done is something interesting. Because, and if you go towards the statistics bar here, the price over book really sucks. That means it's way overpriced. But what they've done was they raised around $230 million to offset their book value because once they have more cash, their book value rises. And so they reduced their price over book and thus now is evaluated or valuated higher than it was previously. Now, that is a straight on level of smartness that they've recognized. Instead of saying, okay, the price is going to correct the price over book. Now we're going to increase our book value by really just selling more shares. Now this price over book of 106 is not adjusted yet. Once the next filing comes in for the quarter, this will be adjusted. Next thing coming is the SEC filings. Now we have a new 13G. We're ready to do the offering. We have a new 13G, which is basically uh, institutional buyers. This is domain partners. We don't get the exact amount of percentage updated on here. But also investments, institutional buyers have been adding onto this one this week. Uh, I don't see either. I don't see any losses there. So that's amazing. Also, Stuart Christopher has been awarded uh, shares at six bucks per share. So that is as well something. Well, nothing significant there. There's just been awarded. A bunch of them have been. But only Stuart recently. So there's no selling at least. So that's a good thing. Now, we've done the offering of $230 million, now coming on towards the technical analysis. If you haven't done so, please make sure to subscribe and leave notifications on. It helps my channel quite a lot. Now, on a technical analysis point of view, we're here to determine how far off are we from a correction. Now, you get to see the ADX is above 56.50, so that's a little bit of a dangerous level, although momentum is at 10.01. That is increasingly bullish. MACD looks really good, and the William percent R is... A little bit overbought, but not that level. Then SMA is above the 30 MA and it's above the 50 SMA. So that is amazing. Now, on a two hour perspective, things are looking a little bit rough. But before doing so, we're going to do a one day perspective. A one day perspective, things are looking a little bit that, uh, well, not rough. In places like the MACD, it's testing a reversal. And William Percent R, it's actually looking uh, the, high, the most oversold it's been in the month. ADX is retracting a little and momentum is retracting. But take a look on the moving averages. Between the 10 SMA, the 970 mark, and the 625, that is your trading action zone. So you can easily expect positive reversals to occur there. And every time it touched this green line, it did bounce through. So that's a really good watch point. This channel here between the 10 SMA and the 30 MA is incredibly important. 
50 SMA is above the 200 SMA, and that's a good line to be at. Now, on a two-hour perspective, uh, you get to see the ADX is sitting um, a little bit retracting, so that's a dangerous level from the 14 bucks. Although, right now, it's almost in an accumulation zone, so that's where we're going to leave it at. The moving average band, of course, it's not been, uh, you know, within the moving average band in a while, but for the sake of the argument, $8 in the top, $7.27 in the middle, and $6.55 in the bottom. Stochastic past and stochastic slow are both showing a pullback is eminent. But now, on the Fibonacci retracement, significant support sits at 876 719 562 367 and 53 significant resistance 1099 and 1384 now moving on towards the fibonacci well we moved on from the fibonacci retracements now coming in time towards this channel that i drew way ago and currently it is still within this channel and that's fine as long as it stays within this channel we're happy about it so what we're going to do here quickly is go ahead in the last months or so and try to draw significant Fibonacci trace, sorry, significant supports and resistances. Significant support sits at 1051. Below there, we're looking at 980. Below there, we're looking at 990 or 897. Below there, we're looking down at 864. Below there, we're looking at 797, 743, 722, 588, 533, 478, and then 416. Significant resistances are at the following levels 1142 1260 1347 and 1386 so that's just a couple of things to keep in mind regarding uh basically the price points now comes to the question do ed do you think it's good to basically buy for a long-term investment now this has been a really massive run i'm buying it at 1385 or 1053 from the 50 cents that is quite of a massive jump that i am not comfortable sticking at taking a quick look from where we at right now this is a massive almost parabolic move in terms of trading i definitely think it still has more fuel as long as it stands within the channel but in terms of investing it might be a little bit dangerous especially if you look into the five years you are way higher than anywhere you've been before even though i completely believe in the sapphire product but a price over sales of around 330 that is around 100 times more overvalued than the market it's bound to see a correction trading i definitely think that we're going to see a little bit of a higher trading especially that their quarter earnings are also due at some point now we're coming up into the trading uh season now being go next earning uh, date is not really far off but it's way off in march so you got a few months to do in there uh but in general it is a little bit of a rough situation to be investing in nonetheless trading i definitely think it's bullish in the short term what do you think about the sticker make sure to mention down in the comments below share subscribe and like you have a wonderful day